Welcome back to Motoganda and today's topic, well, is pretty obvious. It's the attacks in Berlin or what they call the attacks in Berlin. Of course, actually there is no really proven fact yet. So let's start with what we actually know for sure. And that's actually not really much. Of course, the only facts we really know so far is there was a truck which ran into a Christmas market in Berlin and so far I think the latest update was 12 dead and 40 injured or so. So that's already everything we know so far for fact, even if the mainstream media declare some of their speculations as facts already, but well, nothing really new there. And even the funny thing is that their so-called facts are changing. Let's better say what they did claim as facts and then changed their opinion about it. So what were the first stories up about the incident? Nearly immediately there were statements coming up saying yeah there was a really brave um, eyewitness which followed up the bad terrorist, of course, obviously it was a bad terrorist, and he followed him up by foot, walking like behind him, like, well, uh, terrorists don't notice that, you, you know, they just do their stuff and then they walk back home or where, wherever, and they don't notice if someone is following them and calling the police to go there and arrest him. So that was the story on mainstream media, the first one. And obviously the police then went and arrested that guy. And as it seems by now, well, this guy didn't have to do anything with it. So I'm really wondering what um, this eyewitness was claiming to see or was seeing there, of course, I mean, did he mix up, like, oh, I saw this guy and followed him home and told the police that he is the terrorist, uh, oh, sorry, my fault, actually it was just the guy who looked similar. Oh, what? I don't get the point how that could be mixed up. So to me, that sounds pretty much like fake news, isn't it? And if I remember correctly, wasn't Facebook going to do something about fake news? So how come then it was spreading like everywhere? So what other funny stories they came up with? Well, there was uh, the actual driver of the truck, which was found dead in the co-driver's seat, which, well, kind of makes sense, of course. Obviously, if you're gonna steal a truck for something like that, you're gonna kill the actual driver. So far that makes sense, but who was that driver? I mean, first stories were like, yeah, confirmed by uh, the logistics company who owns the truck. It was the cousin of the owner uh, afterwards it turned from cousin to son-in-law if I remember correctly 
and so far it still kind of makes sense but what I was reading this morning then and what to me at least doesn't make any kind of sense was that the original driver of the truck prevented it from getting worse so like what so as usual they didn't say anything any proof or something like that how he prevented it from getting worse and if he was still alive by the time or if he was already dead and still prevented something which would make even less sense but what to me already doesn't make sense so okay you're gonna steal a truck to do something bad with it doesn't matter what and apparently you have a gun or a knife or whatever what you do first obviously is killing the original driver you don't tell the driver like come on let's have a seat and you go now to the code driver seat and watch just what I'm doing with the truck no worries I will kill you afterwards and the original driver then just sits there like okay well I can't do anything so I'm just gonna watch it and then I at least somehow prevent from worse things happen and where it gets even worse I mean where it gets really worse and just into the same and usual terror attack false flag bullshit is when they now out of a sudden found some ID of the alleged terrorist below the driver's seat. Uh, come on, what what do they learn at their I don't know terrorist schools or whatever? What is the first lesson like? Be aware, always leave some ID, passport or anything so they can easily find out who you are. I mean, I, okay, I get it if it's kind of a suicide thingy, so you blow yourself up or anything like that, and you kind of want the fame for it, but if you run away afterwards and you're fleeing it's the most stupid thing you can do leaving any ID there so that the police immediately knows for who they're looking so sorry but nope I, I don't buy that story I mean even even the, the bullshit which came up up front was hard to believe but come on this like let's say typical terrorist attack thingy like you always find a passport even if for example like 9-11 if you crash into a building and tear down the building passports will be always found so basically all the media which apparently cried out beforehand like yeah Facebook and Google and everyone has to do something against fake news all those media currently just spreading fake news ah, and it starts raining again well anyway let us leave all the mainstream media lies just aside for a moment and let's assume okay what they're saying is kind of true and it was a terror attack of some Muslim terrorist of course in that case even if it would still be a barbaric attack um, I kind of understand why they did it I mean what is going on in let's say 
Afghanistan or Syria or Libya. Uh, basically, I'm mentioning those countries for some reason because those are countries where France were actively involved and where even Germany is actively involved in the war against the people over there. So, if you have like for the past, what is it, at least one decade or even two maybe already, let's generalize it, say Western countries bombing your maybe first your neighboring countries and then your own country and well I'm pretty sure you would gather some kind of hate against those people who bomb your countries continuously I mean what what were the official reasons why the wars were started uh, we wanted to bring them democracy well, that turned out not too well, right? So, they're being bombed, their life is getting worse and worse. So, just imagine what would you do? Most probably you would do the same. You would migrate. I mean, go anywhere else where you have a better life and where you don't get bombed on a daily base. And well, maybe then you arrive at a certain point in Germany or in France. And well, you know from back home who bombed you and you're there now and you're pissed and then obviously that doesn't make you a terrorist immediately but if then some let's say bad people come and tell you like ah come on look here you can do something in revenge doesn't just to clarify it doesn't make it uh, legit or better or anything like that I'm just saying I understand why they do it if it was like that and it's not even like they would just as they as, as it's always claimed in mainstream media that they would hate all Western countries and all what is it called uh, non-believers I forgot what what the word they use for that but basically that they hate everyone who is not Islam is, uh, is Islam Muslim whatever and basically that's not true at all and I can easily prove it with one simple fact those people are not stupid they know who is invading their country and yes I'm saying invading of course it's nothing else than invading and they're kind of fighting back in those countries. Of course, take the country where I live, for example, Malta. We are, I'm not sure, over at least over 90% Catholics over here. Uh, me personally excluded, but it's over 90%. I think even like 98% or something like that. So it's a huge majority of Catholics and pretty small minority of Muslims and we are actually even way closer to those countries like Libya's from here I think like is it a hundred kilometers or a hundred miles well let's say a hundred miles so 160 kilometers not exactly sure about that but really 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 close and even Syria is quite kind of close from here so if it would be the way the mainstream media says and the Muslims just hate all non-Muslims and want to kill them all 
Well, we would be the perfect target, no. The so one should assume that since we're so close and the bad Muslims want to kill all the Christians, for example, in our case, we should have like tons of terror attacks over here, like on a daily base or something like that. But apparently we had so far exactly zero. And I can even name you the, the reason for that. Of course, we are not involved in any war at all. I mean, we don't even have an army for it. That's even if we would want to get involved, like, I don't know how big the Maltese army is, but uh, I would doubt it can fight anyone. Well, so what does that basically mean? Um, if you want, of course everyone is talking now about it, obviously, if you want to prevent further terrorist attacks, um, you shouldn't do more integration of people or even bomb back harder or whatever else I was reading. You just should simply stop bombing them. Of course, if you don't bomb them, it's pretty easy and to me it's so so damn logic and not sure why it's not logic to our politicians it's just so logic if you don't bomb them their country won't be destroyed they won't become refugees they won't become pissed and they won't come over to your country and kill your people there as easy as that but well Apparently that's a lesson our politicians didn't learn yet, or I suspect them rather they don't want to learn it. But anyway, that's it for that video. I hope you liked it, and if you did so, make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with all of your friends. Does it make a good Christmas gift? Well, kind of. I assume so. So share it as a Christmas gift for your friends or for me or I don't know. And obviously if you have anything to say just write it down there in the comments and hit that little subscribe button if you didn't do so yet. And I see you in the next video.